in your record, tell you now. <laughs> Good evening. This is a meeting of the Scarborough Board of Education. It's January 21st, 2016. This is a workshop session. May I have the attendance, please? Mrs. Bealey? Here. Mrs. Leifert? Here. Mrs. Massengill? Here. Dr. Miles? Mrs. Murphy? Here. Mrs. Perry? Here. Mrs. Shea? Here. Ms. Hoff? Here. Ms. Hardy? Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Very Is there anyone in the audience this evening that wishes to speak to any item on the agenda? Seeing none. We'll go right to new business, 5.0. 5.1, the meeting minutes of December 17th. What is the will of the board? Move approval as presented. Second. Any discussion, changes? Very good, all in favor? Six plus one. 5.2, the minutes of January 7th, 2016. Will the board? Approval is presented. Second. Any comments? Very good. All in favor? Six plus. Okay, you want to hear it. Six. And 5.3 appointments. 5.3.1. These are, as presented in your packet, these are the final winter coaching appointments. Move approval as presented. Second. Any questions? Discussion? You said final, correct? Correct. Thank you. Correct, Mrs. Massenkel. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Six plus one. Thank you. 6.0, oh, the workshop session. 6.1, information technology cost benefit analysis. Dr. Andrews. Um, I continue to um, uh, uh, shout the praises of our information technology team um, and their leader, uh, uh, Jen Lim. They continue to do an amazing job. Uh, Jen is a, a, a very important member of our leadership council and um, at our leadership council meetings, which happen every two weeks, um, she provides us with an update of the work that's ongoing and it, it really is it's mind boggling. Uh, you know, a lot of times not all of us fully understand all of the, all of the details of, of what happens, but, but it's, um, it's amazing um, how that team is or finally orchestrated to really get so much work done and um, you know to, to uh, pretty much bring on the one-to-one -one at the high school pretty seamlessly um, is just an, an ama one of the many amazing feats that this team does. So um, it's important each year that there be um, an opportunity for Jen to really address the board and to provide you um, uh, an overview and really that that's just what you're getting is a bit of an overview because the detail and the intensity and the complexity of the work that we hear about every every other week um, is is uh, is sort of mind, as I said mind boggling so without uh, further ado I'm going to introduce Jen Lim who will provide us with um, cost benefit analysis a little bit of update on what um, IT uh, has been doing to keep themselves busy and particularly um, uh, get a, a bit of an update in terms of the high school one-to-one -one investment. Okay, so I apologize because I always find it hard to present in a format like this. So we've got three screens, hopefully everybody can see something. I might, um, when we show, I have a little video that we've put together about the high school one-to-one -one program and kind of um, some feedback from the students and from the teachers and from Dave Creech 
Um, so when we do that, I might turn some of the lights off so we fall asleep, but I, it's hard to see on the screen. So <coughs> we'll get to the high school one-to-one. -one. I've sort of backloaded that so we could go through just, I, I chose a couple of sort of key initiatives that we completed last year, um, just to give you an idea of what our staff does. Um, <coughs> the first up is going to be the Google migration. Um, I think that we talked about this last year, but essentially this is sort of part of our efficiency initiative, which is to try to um, save the district and the town money by um, really moving a lot of things to the cloud and um, consolidating a lot of things. <coughs> so with the Google migration, um, we tried to take everybody, there was something called the G Drive within the district. The G Drive was hosted internally, and essentially the G Drive housed all of our regular documents, so not our confidential documents. Each drive was for our confidential documents. What we asked the staff to do about two years ago was really start thinking about going through all of their documents, all their folders, all of their files, weeding things out, and preparing to move everything to Google. Google is in the cloud, so essentially it took that huge burden if you think that there's you know, roughly four to 500 staff people here and 3,100 students. So all of that data that was being housed on various servers here, we moved to the cloud, so we moved to Google. So about two years ago, we started this initiative. Um, we helped them through year one. Year two, we did give them a definite hard deadline and said everything needs to be in Google. We did a, a, a lot of training. I have to give a shout out to Alicia Thornton Biggs because she kind of led that with a lot of the ed techs and the tech integrators to try to help the teachers understand how the file structures work, how Google works. And a lot of credit goes out to the staff too because it was different, something very different for them. And I have to say they took it very well and I think, you know, with the help of their internal um, ed tech staff, they definitely did a great job moving everything. <coughs> so, um, as of the end of last year, we were officially on Google Drive. Um, Google Drive is really sort of where we store our documents, our folders. From there, you can share things out with other people. We are within a closed domain, so you can share things out within that domain. Um, we also employed at the end of the year, the beginning of the fall, we employed Gmail. So we moved all of those users off of our Outlook system and we didn't have to pay for outlet licensing anymore, we moved them to Gmail. Um, we also, um, as you know, last year we put into place a new website that was built on the Google platform, and my intent was sort of pushing everything initially to Google platform, so we had the town website, and the school website all built on the same Google platform. My intent was really so that once that got to Google, and then we got all the documents to Google, and we got Gmail, then everything sort of integrates within Google Apps, Apps for Education. So we did start a new school intranet, so we moved that off of our internal systems as well. So the intranet is um, you know, privilege password, but essentially staff can reach it anywhere, anytime. So that was a big benefit for folks because one of the things that I heard when I started here about three and a half years ago was people were having a lot of trouble when they were at home trying to reach things that were um, you know, internally stored within our network. So really the intent was kind of to try to make things a lot easier for the staff as well, staff and students. So we did start a new school intranet. That's also on a Google platform. So now all of the calendars in an ideal world integrate. Um, with each other, so you really should only be entering things in one calendar and it should be populating across whatever calendars you like. In the past, what we were doing was trying to populate, if you had an event, you would go out in, in the um, Microsoft world and you would try to populate it in the 15 calendars that you had to, so everybody who needed to see the event could see it. Now, hopefully, it just sort of flows through. Um, we also have done a, a greatly expanded use of Google Apps. We're still looking at different Google Apps that are available to us through the Google Apps for Education, but the three that we really expanded upon were Google Sites. So we do have some students and some classes that are um, starting to experiment with building their own sites out of Google, so much like our website for the town or the school or the internet. 
students within classes can build their own sites. Um, we do have a Google Classroom, which is something that <coughs> teachers can use to communicate and, and assign out um, work to their students. And then they can actually go in and grade the work. It's sort of a communication collaboration tool. Um, and then, of course, Google Drive. And Google Drive is, again, where they store all their documents, files, and folders. So that was the Google Minds migration. We are this year experimenting with taking some of the um, confidential documents, encrypting them, and um, seeing how that's working in terms of storing in Google. Um, we have a, a lot of work to do on that end, but that's just something that we're exploring. Um, I, I'm not going to go really into the weeds on this because this tends to be the part where I lose people and they fall asleep. <laughs> it's really exciting to us, but I, I know it's not the most <laughs> exciting thing to everybody else. Um, we completed a backbone upgrade. Okay, so I should start at the beginning. MSLN, which is the um, main state library network, they provide the internet for many of the schools to come throughout Maine. They announced that they were going to give us a one gigabit um, internet drive uh, bandwidth. In order to facilitate that, we did have to do a lot of back end work in many of the um, buildings because we had switches. So if you think that that is sort of a, um, a highway that's running into your building, if you have an on-ramp, let's say you have you know, a 10-lane highway, but your on-ramp is only a half a car wide, you've got a problem. So we really had to expand sort of those on-ramps at all of the buildings. So we had to do some switch upgrades. So we do have now internet upgrades, bandwidth upgrades of one gigabit throughout all the buildings. And then we upgraded at the same time the backbone to 10 gigabit. So within the campus, within the town, we actually can do sort of internal um, data transfers of 10 gigabit. We also at that time did a virtualization project. And again, I sort of um, couple this or I categorize this under the efficiency project because we had a lot of servers that were taking up a lot of space. Um, those servers get old, we have to retire them, we have to replace them. Those servers require licensing for things like operating systems and whatnot. Um, the, the best way for us to try to save money for the town was really to try to reduce the number of servers. And the best way to do that is to virtualize the server so that you take one piece of equipment instead of having five separate pieces, now you have one that has five separate servers on it. So that was one of the projects that we did. Um, and also in that, something that I have been really pushing for, and we just kind of found some time to do it last year, and we're still working on it, is a disaster recovery business continuity plan. So sort of expanding um, you know, how, how we, in the event of a disaster, can potentially recover and recover very quickly data and operations for the town as a whole, but specifically the school district. Um, so part of the virtualization was actually being able to take different um, pieces of hardware and locate them at different places throughout the district to try to create co-location facilities. Um, we also did improved Wi-Fi coverage, basically just doing what they call heat maps within the building. So making sure that everybody within the building had adequate access to um, wireless access points, WAPs. Um, and we did find some spots in different buildings, mostly in the um, high school, where we did have to put in um, additional APs and um, replace them. So that was sort of that's just a high-level overview of the infrastructure upgrades. If anybody has questions afterwards, feel free to email me. We do like to talk about it. Um, some of the other projects, these were not you know major projects, but I would say that these projects are very time-consuming. Um, and they are critical to the people who they affect. So um, we completed an AV replacement at the high school. We had funding in years past to replace, we had aging projectors. They were upwards of 10 years old and many of them were failing. And we didn't have any replacements so people were going without. So we did a major push over the last two years to try to get all of those replaced. So we were able to do that at the end of last year, which coincided with the one-to-one -one program. So that was great for everybody at the high school. Um, we also have to replace carts at the middle school. So at the middle school, we had some carts um, 
some of them were fire hazards, <laughs> and some of them were just falling apart, literally. I mean, you, you know, a teacher would go to pull a door open, a little door would fall out. So we had to sort of prioritize our highest priority, maybe in groups of 10, and we have started to replace them. We obviously don't have funding to replace all of them at once, but we're getting there, so hopefully in the next two years or so, by the time the next MLTI refresh is over, we will have done a card replacement there. Um, we sort of, I, I like to say we normalized tech at Wentworth because this was sort of the first year post-deployment at Wentworth and um, I have to say the folks down there are doing a fantastic job in terms of really, it, uh, the integration into the curriculum is much faster, I don't know if Kelly and, and John would agree, but much faster than I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. Typically it's a two to three year um, period before you are sort of fully integrated into the curriculum, but I mean really they, they've done a great job. And thanks to Joellen and to Maria <coughs> as well because they've really worked with the teachers to try to get that done. Um, we, and there were some things that we still had to go in and fix and, um, you know, try to troubleshoot down there. But I think for the most part Wentworth is off and running. Um, we did begin a K2 tech refresh, so next year, 2016-17, will be the K2 tech refresh, meaning we'll go into the, tech, the K2 buildings and we'll take a look at the technology that they have. We're working with them on um, identifying some appropriate technology for their user population, and for their teachers, and for their curriculum. So we should have that kind of nailed down. We've had a couple of requirements definition sessions. We'll have a couple more, and we do have some devices out in the field that the teachers are testing. We have a meeting scheduled in February to get feedback from them, so I would think that we'll be sort of nailing down a plan within the next couple of months. Um, online testing deployment. We did have an online test last year, which we rolled out, and um, everybody kind of pulled together, and we, we got it done, and then the state of Maine announced that they weren't going to be using that anymore, and um, there was much angst. But I think this year they're going to have a new um, system that sounds like it's going to roll out the same time frame. So we've been working with folks from the state and um, some of our liaisons to try to get that um, secure browser information and, and whatever we need. So hopefully that will go smoothly. I have a little confidence. Um, and then the efficiency initiative. So included in the efficiency initiative are the things that I mentioned, such as the upgrade student structure virtualization. But also there are things like centralized printing, which we talked about before. So PaperCut is our centralized printing solution. And essentially it allows um, users to print anything from anywhere in the district. So if you are a teacher at the high school, but you're attending a meeting down at the middle school, you can go to a printer, punch in your code, and it will pull your um, print job. This um, eliminated the need for desktop printers, so we really had a huge cost savings there, not just in terms of the printers themselves, replacement maintenance, but also in terms of ink. So we, we are starting, I think, to realize that cost savings now. Um, and then we are doing, right now, we're doing a beta of scan to email. So essentially, if you do print something or you receive something printed, you can go to what we call the MSP, the multifunctional printers. You can scan in your document. You can type in your email address and it will send it to you. This is also going to facilitate a fax to desktop program that we are also in beta test with, but on the town side. And that's going to eliminate the need basically for all the fax machines. So we're, we're working on it. We kind of knew, I think, going into this efficiency initiative that it was going to be probably a five-year project to really kind of roll things out, test them properly, train people, and then slowly phase out the equipment. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the high school one one project. So does anybody have questions about anything that I very quickly ran through here? So the, um, the new measured progress testing, well, is it going to be second grade through 12th or 8th? Third through 8th? 11th will be the paper. Okay. So are we going to be able to do one to one computer? Is it all on computers? Yes. Yeah. At, yeah. at our K5 level? Yep. We, we should be, yes, we should be oh. able to. I mean, we, we're doing um, ELL testing right now. So we have sort of 
Um, and any school that doesn't have one-to-one -one machines, we've provided specialty machines that are configured specifically for the testing. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so we'll roll those out to the students. We always provide backups, and we haven't had any issues yet. So and not in the last actual classroom. Yep, wow, that's, that's our goal. That's good. That's our goal. Yeah. I thought, Jen. I thought everybody 312 had a laptop. Yeah. They yeah. do. K2 does not. But K2 isn't in on the right. testing, right? Right. And my second question is, what did what did you mean by your we finally normalized the tech at Wentworth? We had, you know, some troubleshooting that we had to do. As I mentioned before, we wanted to do a heat map down there to make sure that everybody had adequate Wi-Fi coverage. We had a couple of APs that the access wi Wi-Fi access points that needed to be replaced. Um, you know, we had some machines that failed and we had to send them out for warranty replacement, just, you know, things like that. It's all the normal stuff that you would see <coughs> in a massive deployment like that. Some little odds and ends that you need to go in kind of in year two and normalize things. And I would also say that part of that normalization was we always, I mean, that was a, that was a brand new pro project for us. So when we have rolled out devices in the past through MLTI, there was sort of an MLTI um, professional development program created for us. And there were, you know, we had rollout procedures for the past 10 years. At Wentworth, it was a completely different thing because these kids were not going to be taking the devices home. Um, it was a different age group. We needed to do different training with them. So, you know, it was sort of normalizing over the second year what worked for us in the first year, what didn't work for us in the first year, what should we change. And I think it was pretty smooth. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think we had ran into any bumps in the road this year. Thank you. What, what is the technology at K through 2? Are there, I know in years past there's been desktops. Are those gone and now there's laptops? Right. So there's no desktop. What we kind of roll back to the year before last, um, we started out with three laptops that actually look like, I'll probably lose the picture now, but they kind of look like these. Mm -hmm. There's a larger laptop. They're rugged, you know, so if the kids drop them, you know, they should start to be okay. Um, so there were three of those set up per room. Um, most of the teachers had, all the teachers had a, a laptop device. It wasn't necessarily that device. Um, we did try to replace those at the end of last year with the HP 440s that we rolled down from the high school. Um, but this year what we did was once we deployed 1-1 at the high school, they had a couple hundred different kinds of laptops. Some of them were that model, some of them were the HP 440s, some of them were uh, the 4440s. So we took those, we cleaned them up, reconfigured them, and we rolled them out in carts. Because one of the things that we discovered when we went out and did requirements definition sessions <coughs> with the K2s in the spring of last year was that they wanted to, they didn't feel like they needed one to one necessarily in the classroom um, for everybody, but they did want to try to see if we had a cart available to do a one to one project. How would that work? So what we did was we rolled out the cards and we rolled them out as there's like three cards per K2 school. So right now they share those and a classroom can um, sign out the card at laptops, be one to one for the day or one to one for the project and then they, they sign them back in. Great. The intent moving forward is they may use a combination of those and some other device I think what they're finding is smaller tablet devices would be better for the smaller hands. Mm -hmm. um, and the tablet devices kind of meet the curriculum needs of K2 a little bit better than the big laptops. Um, there are some things like keyboarding skills that they require to do in like second grade where they're preparing them to go to Wentworth where they're all one-to-one, -one, um, where they do need the full keyboard laptop. So we're, we're, we're experimenting with them, but that's what they have this year. So far, so good. I've heard good things about them. I think we rolled those carts out to the K2s in maybe October, and they've been using them right along for different things. So, yeah, so we've heard good things about it. 
Is the Google Classroom app replacing PowerSchool? No. No. You're no. still using PowerSchool as yeah. well? Yeah. I mean, PowerSchool is really um, a way to, for the parents to check in right. on the kids. It's really just great. Google Classroom is a way to collaborate with the students on paper and assignments. Okay. So it's, it's, it kind of uses the power of Google Drive okay. to, to accomplish the collaboration. Anyone else? Okay, so high school one-to-one. -one. <laughs> um, as you all know, yay, we got laptops at the high school last year. Um, we started in early summer to actually purchase and start configuring the laptops. So we had roughly 1,200 laptops at the high school. As you can imagine, those were big deliveries, a lot of unboxing happening. It was like, you know, Christmas all over again. We went through them all, um, c configured them. There was a, a large amount of network work on the back end that had to be done to um, accommodate that number of laptops. Um, and then we had to assign them to students. Um, the deployment was interesting. We weren't quite sure. We talked to a lot of other schools about how they did their deployments at the high school. Um, some of them start them in the summer and sort of have optional pickups, and some of them mandate that the kids pick them up or parents pick them up. Or, so anyway, we decided in the first couple of weeks that we would take one week and we would do one class a day, which seemed to go well. It was a little crazy at times, but we did manage to get a system going where we were able to get them pretty much all deployed within four days. Um, once the kids had them, uh, Jen Adams, who is now the technology integrator at the high school, really stepped in and started trying to immediately hit the ground running with integration um, with the teachers and creating different classes, seminars, and um, we had Jen Cleary up there too, who was very busy working on, you know, trying to help the kids um, just with the, with the plugs and wires machine. So we have ongoing maintenance, we have ongoing um, imaging issues. We right now are working with Monique because this is about the time of year that we start putting together the images for all of the um, for all of the, the schools, all the different phase levels. So we're working on that. Um, we're also working on the different processes because this is our first year of collection and the end of year buyouts for the seniors because as you know we did set up a program where the seniors could actually purchase their devices in the space of shoes at the end of the year. So we're kind of working on that. Um, and, the, and then we have the cyclical replacement. So it is critical and this is something that we were very, very transparent about when we were going through the funding process for this, but it's critical that the cyclical funding for the devices keep coming, keep coming because we will have to replace these devices, you know, four or five years down the road. Um, that said, I am so pleased with the way that these devices are holding up. Knock on wood. Um, we've had about four damaged devices for the entire year of a student population of, what, 1,050. Um, so, yeah, and one of them, you know, somebody drove over it accidentally, but that was completely covered 100% by the actual damage protection that we purchased on the device. Same thing, we had a, a screen that was completely damaged, I mean, unusable, 100% covered. We have not had one damaged device that is not covered by warranty or actual damage protection. So I just wanted to make that point because the warranties on the Lenovo's are fantastic, but um, we did we did make the decision to spend a little extra money and purchase the external damage protection because we have been this, we was in our first rodeo we've been through this you know at the other phase levels and it's really worth it at the end of the day I and mean, one of those devices you know the replacement cost of the device could be over six hundred dollars we bought them for four thirteen but to replace them it could be six hundred six hundred fifty dollars so to have this completely replaced at no charge is great. Um, so I, we had a very short period of time to put this video together, but we tried to go out and find some students who would be willing to talk on camera, which is a little harder than you would imagine, um, about <laughs> their experience with the, the laptops. And then we had some teachers. Um, they gave some real-world examples of how they would use the laptops. Keep in mind that these have only been out in the field for about four months. <coughs> so this is, they've come a long way in four months. Um, Let me see if, uh, should I turn off some of these lights? Can you guys, yeah. I don't know which, which. 
I'm David Creech, principal of Scarborough High School. I'm here today to talk to you about our new laptop program the 2015-2016 school year. It's important to start by thanking all the members of the school community for supporting this laptop program. That support began last year when we went through the process of planning and voting on a budget that would, su that would support this program. In addition, I think it's David Creech, principal of Scarborough High School. I'm here today to talk to you about our new laptop program that was successfully implemented at the beginning of the 2015-2016 school year. It's important to start by thanking all the members of the school community for supporting this laptop program. That support began last year when we went through the... That would, that would support this program. In addition, I think it's important to thank our technology department. Our technology department has worked for years in planning this laptop program and successfully implemented it last summer and the fall of the school year. In addition to the technology department, we're fortunate to have a new technology integrator coach. Jen Adams is our coach here at the high school and she has been hugely instrumental in helping students and staff learn how to integrate technology into the classroom. Our teachers are already underway at various stages of implementation. Some teachers have been using technology in the past and are furthering their efforts now that their students have laptops. Other teachers are at the infant stages but are learning from other teachers and from our technology coach. In addition, I think every single classroom that I've observed this school year, I have seen students with their laptops out using those as a part of that lesson. Not only are they using it in the classroom, but they're using it at home and it's a key to their success in the classroom and in all courses that they're taking here at the high school. 
So as we move forward, I think it's important to remember that this is the first year of implementation. We're going to learn a lot from what we can do with technology, and we're hoping that we're going to get the continued support from the community as we move forward. Thank you. Um, so some of the challenges um, with starting a one-to-one -one program, uh, first off, everyone's at a different level, so trying to differentiate um, support for teachers who have about their experience. We have another meeting though, don't we? Yeah, at eight. <laughs> about 15 minutes. Hi, I'm David Creech, Principal of Scarborough High School. I'm here today to talk to you about our new laptop program that was successfully implemented at the beginning of the 2015-2016 school year. It's important to start by thanking all the members of the school community for supporting this laptop program. That support began last year when we went through the process <laughs> and voting on a budget that would, su that would support this program. In addition, I think it's important to thank our technology department. Our technology department has worked for years in planning this laptop program and successfully implemented it last summer and the fall of the school year. In addition to the technology department, we're fortunate to have a new technology integrator coach. Jen Adams is our coach here at the high school, and she has been hugely instrumental in helping students and staff learn how to integrate technology into the classroom. That's great. The recorder. I thought it was Hi, I'm David Creech, Principal of Scarborough High School. I'm here today to talk to you about our new laptop program that was successfully implemented at the beginning of the 2015-2016 school year. 
It's important to start by thanking all the members of the school community for supporting this laptop program. That support began last year when we went through the process of planning and voting on a budget that would, su that would support this program. In addition, I think it's important to thank our technology department. Our technology department has worked for years in planning this laptop program and successfully implemented it last um, summer and the fall and, uh, we can, we can forward In addition to the technology to department, we're fortunate to have a new video. technology integrated um, coach. Yeah, Sorry, that's Jen that's Adams is our coach here at the high school, and she has been hugely instrumental really in helping up, students and staff so learn how to integrate technology into the, the classroom. Our teachers are already underway at various stages of implementation. Some teachers have been using technology in the past and are furthering their efforts now that their students have laptops. Other teachers are at the infant stages but are learning from other teachers and from our technology coach. In addition, I think every um, single classroom so that I've observed this school year, we'll I have seen students to, with their laptops um, out using those as a part of that lesson. Not only are they using it in the classroom, but they're using it at home, and it's a key to their success in the classroom and in all courses that they're taking here at the high school. So as we move forward, I think it's important to remember that this is the first year of implementation. We're going to learn a lot from what we can do with technology, and we're hoping that we're going to get the continued support from the community. Um, as I mentioned, we are looking at moving everything um, from Huddle into Huddle. Uh, and some of the challenges um, with starting the Lightning Network program, uh, first off, um, everyone's at a different level, so trying to uh, differentiate the support for teachers who have a lot of experience will be talking about the MLC and no yeah, few maybe feel less comfortable using it, it um, been three and in the classroom years at that point, and, it will and be so to my role as an integrator so we'll be a look at that. has really um, been the information from here how they're going to be offering, not only with um, me, but, but also we will with devices be moving um, off of the of basics of how to turn it on and how to um, um, access the application, so we'll but also to, um, the next level, which is really getting them into the uh, higher level uh, of the technology. Can you tell me a little bit about how you've been using the Lenovo Yoga in your classroom? Or in your classroom? Um, we use it to like write uh, essays, the homework, um, use them for... That's not different than the
final ends, or how would something like that? Yeah, yeah. We we talked about a sort of myriad of different solutions. Do we try to collect them, you know, before finals, after finals? But really, before finals sort of defeated the purpose of having the laptop. Mm -hmm. um, and we had so many teachers. We did a survey with the teachers. And we had so many teachers tell us, no, 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 we use these every single day in class and we absolutely need them for finals. So we have worked out a schedule where we will be collecting them immediately following each class of finals. Obviously the seniors will be a little easier because it will be done, yeah, much earlier. Um, but yeah, so we, we have repercussions of not turning it in. And, um, the intent is really once it's Hi, I'm David Creech, principal of Scarborough High School. I'm here today to talk to you about our new laptop program that was successfully implemented at the beginning of the 2015-2016 school year. It's important to start by thanking all the members of the school community for supporting this laptop program. That support began last year when we went through the process of planning and voting on a budget that would, su that would support this program. In addition, I think it's important to thank our technology department. Our technology department has worked for years in planning this laptop program and successfully implemented it last summer and last fall. Thank you. 
and I think the biggest thing for me as a teacher in English is um, all of a sudden we can write whenever we want to. Um, we can pull out the laptops and start working on a composition right from the beginning or that we've already started. And by contrast, in previous years, that would entail either doing it on paper and pen, which is usually the most natural way for students to write, uh, or we would have to book a computer lab, which usually took a couple of days, maybe even a week or two. Depending on the time of year, it might be possible to do both of them to do things. So I love the spontaneity of having a laptop that I can um, have the students open up and we can begin working on things. Um, even just in terms of writing, that's been a huge change for us. And I think it's been good. My students have already written more essays and revised more essays this year than they did by this time last year because we can just do a written class. Um, and it's also allowed me to be a lot more interactive with them when they're writing. I can help them with editing through Google Docs by um, suggesting comments, edits, and things like that while they're writing or after they've been. It sounds like it's really changed the way that you teach and the way that you're able to provide feedback. <laughs> it definitely has, and it's a, it's a gradual thing because we've, we've gone <coughs> most of my career here in Scarborough not having them, so it's sort of a, a gradual adapting when the students have really started to get comfortable with it, and I'm getting more and more comfortable with remembering that we have them and sort of planning that way. So again, yeah, it's making a pretty difference, but it's a, it's a gradual adjustment. So can you tell us a little bit, uh, since you were at the middle school and you had a laptop, um, what was it like to
myself and one other teacher, we used to share a laptop cart of 13 laptops, and each of us had a total of about uh, 100 students, so 200 students with 13 laptops. Um, now, every student has their own laptop, um, whereas in the past, if I had um, an assignment of needing to access our online textbook materials or an article, I would ask them to take out their phones. Um, not all students had phones or had Wi-Fi enabled, depending on their phone, so then we would have to figure out a shared kind of thing. So um, getting to this point is huge um, for us. Can you tell us about your experience this year with students having one-to-one -one access to the Lenovo laptops? Yeah, um, yeah, it's been really great this year compared to last year um, with a lot of my um, photography and digital art classes. It was a really big apple because I basically had two classrooms where I was jumping from uh, computer labs from my regular classroom. And so that created just sort of a logistic headache. Um, but besides that, besides that um, just having kids have access to the internet or Google Classroom has allowed us to do more work and also sort of um, communicate with them on a more regular basis. Um, I don't think that that would be as streamlined if we didn't have one-to-one. -one. Um, and again, a lot of times what's great now is because they have access to certain programs on their laptops, they can do continuing work at home that they normally would not have been able to continue doing. So. You know, before where it was just limited to what we were accomplishing in a lab, it basically ended up being the class. Whereas now, I can um, teach kids sort of skills or exercises in class, and then they can continue sort of developing that skill set at home. So that's been. Do you think it has changed the the way that students learn? Um, I think so. I, I think it's I think it's still yet to be determined. I mean, I'd love to sort of see what their response is like after I give them a survey at the end of the class, which is happening next week, um, just to sort of see what their opinions are. But in terms of just, you know, again, I've seen a lot of students really excel and be excited about what we're learning in class and sort of continuing that excitement at home. I think that that's a great example of why this is such a great transition to one-to-one -to -one because they don't just have to end what they're learning in the school. And you know, if it's if they're able to do it at home, I think that's just for the proof that, you know, it's successful and that they're continuing to learn on their own and take initiative to do that. I, I think it's been a really great experience. I I know that it's sort of sped up a lot of processes within my class in terms of if I have like a writing assignment in my class, um, students are able to type their responses right away versus writing by hand. And again, I'll have access to those documents right away versus you know, adding to a pile of paper. Um, yeah, I think I think overall it's been I think it's been really successful in sort of eliminating all this extra extra classroom and stuff that we don't need. So all that's right there accessible for them. Having them design project based learning opportunities for students, um, and having them create videos and multimedia projects that again they wouldn't be able to do without having a little bit of yoga device. So a great tool for no, I, I can't believe uh, how much more uh, effective and more effective I've become as a teacher already uh, because of the ability to use this uh, the laptop. Has a lot of possibilities for the future for me and what I do in human history and in economics. Definitely, this year having it has like been a really good like improvement, and it's definitely something that I use all the time and use it at home, use it here. And the low tech. So the low tech environment here. Um, I'm going to turn these on. So. Okay, so I think a couple of things to highlight from that. Um, um, I don't think that the importance of the tech integrators can be understated. Um, I don't know if 
<laughs> you could probably agree with me on that, but we have, uh, we're fortunate to have Jen Adams up at the high school with Courtney Gracias out at, well, she's really sort of came to 12. She, yeah, came to 12. Um, we have Holly Grafham at the middle school and Joanne Clive at Wentworth, and so we are so fortunate to have them because they are really the ones who are sort of working one-on-one -on -one with the teachers and a lot of times the students trying to figure out, you know, what's kind of up and coming, what's new out there, what's existing out there that the teachers and students don't even know about, and what can they use to really kind of be more effective in the classroom. And then I don't want to underplay too the Rita Doring and the, the, our um, ed techs who are out there doing some of the wider stuff. So we have Rita Doring at um, the middle school, Maria Saracino at My Wentworth. Um, we don't have anybody at K2, so that's a challenge for us. And then uh, we have Jen Cleary at the high school. And those folks are running, running, running like their hair is on fire all the time trying to, you know, fix machines, help kids. Um, they'll take any care of anything from warranty issues to craft screens to, you know, loose ports, anything like that. So we have a great team that's out there. I have a great team on the IT staff who, you know, works one-on-one -on -one with these folks all the time, day in and day out. Um, I, I have to hand it to the kids, too, because for the most part, the kids have been phenomenally um, respectful of the technology and the devices. And you always worry about that when you're going to put out, you know, 1,100 devices in a school. You worry, what are these kids going to do with these devices? How many, you know, damaged devices? To only have four out of the entire high school for the past four months, I think, is a huge accomplishment for, for that population. So, again, I apologize for the attack. Does anybody have any questions about that? Or? I just want to follow up. It's like a technology success story. A couple years ago, CSI was introduced at the middle school, this cyber sleuth. It's essentially a different kind of computer club for kids, <coughs> giving them ownership of some of the tech support. And they're finally getting to a place now where they're, they're separating into groups. There's like a web design group that's going to make a website for the CSI group. But then they're also um, going to have help desk during their free periods. Kids are going to sign up to sit in a space, and if kids have questions, they can go and talk to the help desk students who will help them with their technology issues, which I think is great that they're finally, you know, they're getting to this place where they are now becoming the helpers, and they're so comfortable with the technology that they can take that on themselves. We have to thank Alicia. Yeah, sorry, so she's done a phenomenal job amazing. working with yeah. those kids and starting the program and getting their interest and just putting it all together. Mm -hmm. And she's been phenomenal with this process too. And that was always our intent was to right. go down that road to have a sort of a help desk group um, and to have them off and running on their own. And now we want to move it up to the high school. We also want to have a club up there. Um, and we're looking at what works, too. I know that they already have a technology club, but kind of expanding that and making that so it's kids mm -hmm. helping kids and actually kids helping teachers, too. She's been great because it's been very um, student-directed mm -hmm. in the you know, since it was just starting out. Like, what do you want to do? What do you want to learn? Where do you want to go? And so they've been able to work independently, but now they're getting a little bit more focused. Okay, you seem to be interested in the web stuff. Do you want to work on a website? And so it's they're coming into their own and it's great. I worked with them a little bit. I actually went down and presented to them and I was really surprised at the um, how advanced the group was. I mean some of those kids had already blown through many of the online coding courses mm -hmm. that we offered them. And I think a couple of them were probably in the running to start on some college level coding classes. So, you know, they, we've, I, I, it's sort of our job, I think, to try to help them and keep up with them and provide what they need, you know, even if it is some kind of advanced level curriculum. It's almost like their fine art. Right. You know, for, mm -hmm. for a lot of kids that yeah. this is their thing. So it's to foster it in a way that, that makes them successful and feel good about it, I think is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I went down and presented at the Day of Code, so I think I had seven groups come through. And I would always ask them, you know, who in the room is interested in coding? Or, and I'm thinking, you know, no, but inevitably in every group, there might have been, you know, 15 or 20 kids. There were always at least one or two kids, mm -hmm. sometimes five or six, who were really interested in going on to you know, code or do something in sort of the technical engineering field. That's mm -hmm. why STEM and STEAM, I think, are so important. Yeah. 
Yep. Just a quick question. Can you still um, email that out to us? And is it possible, or a link to YouTube or whatever, is it possible for our, the communications committee to put that on our Facebook page? We're, um, we're working on it. And what we'd like to do is this is just sort of like a quick down and dirty mm -hmm. video to show you the high school, but mm -hmm. we're, we would like to expand it to kind of show you what's going on one-to-one -one throughout the entire district. Okay. Um, and then we need to get all the appropriate sign-offs okay. before we actually release it out there. But our intent is to have a longer video um, that you know the general public can kind of take a look at and see what we've done and see the successes within the school district. And believe it or not, we've had a lot of questions from a lot of other school districts about how did you get the one-to-one -one program started and what do you do with the devices. And so you know the intent is kind of to help other school districts too. So that we do hope to post it out there at some point. I have one more question about the buyout piece. Mm -hmm. So the seniors. Uh, do you have a, like a deadline as to when you want them to let you know yeah. when you, they're going to be buying yeah. out? And we will be releasing that to the parents shortly. We just need to get all the paperwork right. pieces together. Mm -hmm. So just to remind everybody, this year the senior buyout is $400 for the device. Next year the senior buyout will be 300 The year after that will be 200 and it will be 200 every year thereafter and we, we will roll them forward. It's a little complicated on our end because when I buy the advanced um, damage or the um, accidental damage protection, you buy it in years. You buy one year, two years, three years. So I have to make sure that those are rolling forward and we're cycling out the one year. So that's why it's a little complicated for us. We have to really track them. So one more question on that. When you said it declines down to $200, what happens when you bring in new devices? Does it become four hundred dollars again? No, those go to the freshmen. Freshman. Okay. So then they cycle back up. All right. Yeah. Anyone else? Dave had a question. So I was just going to point out. I think we were talking a little bit about the support, but uh, but one piece we haven't talked a whole lot about are teachers. Teachers have been doing a fantastic job of teaching other teachers. And I've gone into department meetings where there are teachers sitting down, and they're doing the same thing we're doing here, and they're showing them things that they've done to integrate technology into their classroom and sharing it with the rest of their department. So as some of our teachers who are more advanced with that, they're taking the initiative to grow this too. So we have the technology coaches, we have students, but the teachers are doing a great job of kind of training, training that to them. And that's been key too. Okay, thank you so much, Jen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll find out the link at all. Thank you. Oh, this is, I don't know if everybody's seen the device. Oh, you guys, I did bring this. So this is the yoga device that's up at the high school now. It flips into a tablet. Oh. Um, you'll often see, if you walk through the library, you'll see the kids like this because they're doing presentations or, you know, working with other other kids. We do have these protectors on here, too. So yeah. come in handy more than one. Uh, nice. I don't know. Does anybody want it? You brought it in. We have one at <laughs> We have one at our house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to 7.0, do I have a motion to go into executive session pursuant to MRSA subsection 4056C for the purpose of determining the direction and the process of the superintendent search not to return to public session? So moved. Second. Very good. All in favor? Six plus one. Thank you.